Well, hello and welcome back to another video. I thought it was high time that I did another one in my series of looking at um, another make of um, older uh, canal and river boat. And um, you know, I've done a few of these and thank you for all the kind comments about them. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'd do another one. And this time I'm gonna be having a look and this is just my thoughts and a little bit of the history as well on the make of Dawncraft. Now, a uh, quick little uh, look at the history. Uh, Dawncraft was started by uh, the Wilson family. Um, they had been on a holiday um, on a Thames launch that they had restored and went on the Langothlin Canal in 1957 and had such a wonderful time. They thought, you know, this is a great idea. Perhaps other people would like to do this. So when they came back, they started looking into this and eventually, uh, to cut a long story short, they um, leased some land off uh, British waterways uh, on the um, Worcester and Staffs Canal uh, at a place called Kinver and set up a little base there and you know decided that they'd like to maybe have some boats for sale have some boats for hire and um, so they teamed up with the uh, boat building firm who were building predominantly in the late 50s they were predominantly building uh, small boats and um, rowing boats sailing boats that kind of thing a firm of crescent boats in somerset which is taunton actually in somerset and um, they had just started building an 18-foot marine ply cabin cruiser. And so what the Wilson family did is they bought um, unfitted out holes and superstructures, brought them up to Kimber, and then they fitted them out to their own sort of specs. Uh, this went on for a number of years. Uh, through the early 60s, they gradually increased the size. I mean, I think they were doing a 22 foot, a 25 foot, and um, still using Crescent uh, boats, uh, you know, as their base. And, um, and business seemed, you know, quite good. And um, so moving the story on uh, to, we come to 1966. So yes, in 1966, you know, the business was going quite well and so Dawncraft start you know decided to um, start building their own um, hulls and superstructures and not only in marine ply but they started to uh, actually build the cabin tops and sort of superstructure in fiberglass so it was a, a half and half boat the the, the hull of the boats were still a marine ply but the upper half the superstructure and cabin top was in um, GRP you know glass fiber um, and um, they were quite progressive in their day because they um, went to East Germany and bought some GRP spray roving guns um, now I'm not really up on <laughs> GRP techniques and all that that goes with it but I assume obviously this cut the time down and it could be the, the you know GRP could be sprayed into the mold much quicker than sort of hand laying up. And um, in 1968, these sort of crossover boats with the marine ply uh, hull and the GRP superstructure were showed at the uh, boat show at Earl's Court and received you know with great acclaim. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I think they took many orders uh, for these boats and it really sort of, you know, set them on a path to um, being one of the most popular boats at that time on the canal. To a degree, these boats were always more aimed, um, certainly the smaller ones. I mean, I think the range in 1968 was a 19-foot uh, a boat, a 22-foot, a 25-foot boat, a 27-foot uh, aft uh, cabin and then a, a central 27 foot central cockpit type boat and they were even looking at building a 30 foot boat so there's a good range um, the smaller boats were certainly aimed at um, newcomers to, to boating and obviously they were priced accordingly they, they were they were you know quite competitively uh, priced when you looked at other makes and um, I always thought Dawncraft, I, 
to be honest, I, I saw I saw a lot of later dawn crafts as we get into the 70s. I didn't see a lot, you know, I must have seen some of these, you know, early, these later 60s boats um, that they built. But um, they always seemed quite well put together, um, you know, um, and quite well laid up and quite well constructed. But as I definitely laid, you know, more at the, um, you know, um, newcomers to boating. Obviously, at this time in the 1960s, people were having a little bit more disposable income. You know, things were better. We had full employment. You know, there was, um, you know, and so obviously people were looking for things to do and ways of spending this money. And these boats were sold through a number of marine outlets. And um, who would do you? HP kind of finance on these boats and and it must be said as well these a lot of the all virtually all of these boats that were built in the 60s and the majority in the 70s were designed for an outboard motor but that's very you know whizzing through the history um I want to come on now to the most productive years what I think are of Dawncraft and that's the period of you know 1970 right through until that, you know, this, the sort of mid to late 70s. By the time we get to 1970, and um, particularly at the Earl's Court Boat Show that year, which was always held in January, um, Dawncraft had stopped doing this combined system of marine ply hull and GRP glass fibre superstructure. They had switched by that time to building a complete GRP fiberglass boat so not only was the superstructure glass you know reinforced plastic the hull was as well um which obviously um you know was a great move really i mean um grp is much easier to look after uh, particularly as the boat gets older than although marine ply is a very um good boat building material and um you know some of these boats that were built right in the early 60s had you know survived seven eight years on the canal you know with little damage um, so it just shows you how robust marine ply can be when it's built as a boat but um, obviously fiberglass was the you know the, they, the way forward um, by that point in time they were still building quite a, a good range um, you know as I say complete range right through obviously as you'll see I'm going to put some pictures of Dawn Crafts as we go through, um, right from their early days, right on into the later years, um, just to you know show you the idea of the boats and what they looked like, etc. Um, by the time we get to 1972, they launched a um, what was called the Dawn Craft Dandy, which was a 19-foot boat, which doesn't sound very big. But it was really um, like in competition with other boats like the Norman 20 and some other um, smaller glass fibre boats. Out. A really ideal starter boat. Um, these were all 610 beams, so they're all, um, you know, would fit narrow canal locks. Um, but the Dawncraft Dandy um, was basically designed, when they designed it, um, Mr. Wilson actually got his family to to all lay down on their lounge floor and he chalked round them and tried to fit everything in. He had a wife and obviously two sons and he chalked round trying to fit everything in to this little Dawncraft dandy which was only 19 foot but it turned into a very popular starter boat and I mean we had many Dawncraft dandies on the river here over the years. Um, and um, yeah, pop, very popular uh, canal boat. There again, this, this was a, like a, a smallish outboard motor would power this. And um, it came with a, you know, a, a sink with a cold water pump. It had a cooker, it had a toilet compartment. And you know, it had, it was, it was quite a nice fit out inside, particularly these earliest, the earlier uh, 70s boats. Um, and, um, I think that was retailed at just about £958 or something like that in 1972, which doesn't seem a lot of money, but when you put that into context and, and look at what that, uh, you know, would 
be in today's money, it equates to about nine and a half thousand pounds. So you can see boating still was quite expensive and, and obviously not everybody could even afford, you know, the, a, a likes of a Dawncraft dandy. But obviously that was their main aim, Dawncraft, to keep their prices down, to keep the prices competitive and get as many people into boating, you know, as possible, which I applaud them for. And I think, you know, um, uh, they were a great starter boat and there is still lots of Dawncrafts out there so, it, you know, it might be, um, if you're looking for a really budget boat that you might want to do some work on, it might be well looking at, a, you know, a, even a small dandy I've seen for sale recently, a, a Dawncraft 22, a Dawncraft 25. They are still out there, you know, particularly these gla all glass fibre ones um, of the 70s build. Uh, by 1975, they had... Um, 17 retail outlets uh, selling these boats for them. Um, obviously, Dawncraft didn't own these. These were like marine firms. Um, the one I knew, which had about 13 uh, outlets, was a, a firm which I've referred to before in, in the little video I did about Norman Cruises. It was a firm called Ladyline, which had a branch um, on the canal at Braunston, not far from where I am. And they had most of these... Uh, sites had a showroom where they'd have some new boats, quite a few new boats, probably, you know, a couple of Normans, might even have a Freeman 22 um, narrow beam. They would have some Dawn Crafts and various other boats, smaller boats in there as well. And um, so that was Lady Line. Um, there was also um, Dean's Marine up in Cheshire who sold many, many uh, Dawn Crafts, and that was a big outlet. Um, Wilton Marina, they're again near us on the canal. They were always sold a lot of Dawn Craft boats. So they were very popular and, you know, widely available. And like I say, a great, you know, starter boat. Um, these firms, like Ladyline, would often put a package together with you with, a, with an outboard, you know, a fully fitted out boat, basically. And the beauty of that is, you know, you could go in, you could go there and have a look on one weekend on a Saturday afternoon and maybe in a couple of weeks time, your boat would be there outside on the canal ready for you to go. Um, it was like that, you know, um, there was no waiting about to have this boat built. Um, they were, they, you know, were virtually in stock or they'd take one out the showroom. Um, so, um, and also, uh, I read there's a very good historical account of Dawncraft on the um, internet, which I'll put a link to, which I'm you know using some of the material uh, obviously in there because I don't I didn't know an awful lot about Dawncraft. I'd never owned a Dawncraft boat, one of the few um, bigger manufacturers of inland waterways boats that I'd never owned. So I found this you know historical article very interesting, and I mean I've got it here in front of me. And one point that I'd just like to quote from this, um, at the Hamburg Boat Show in October 1975, they took, Dawncraft took orders for 128 cruisers, totaling £350,000. Uh, 51 of these boats went to Holland, 35 to France and 42 to Germany. And all of those orders, amazingly, was delivered in four months. So I think that says a lot about the company and how, you know, at that time, how well it was run and, you know, um, and that they could produce these boats, you know, on a virtually a production line, basically. Uh, you know, sadly, uh, by 1973, with the sort of crisis we had in the Middle East and that had the knock on effect with the oil crisis, which then led to the, you know, the three day week and all the troubles and we had high inflation. Sadly, uh, that hit oil prices and the price of oil rocketed for a few years. And naturally, um, all resins and glass fibre material is basically oil based and everything went up, you know, um, like the foam to make the upholstery, the curtain material, the interior wood, everything. This had a knock on effect, much like today that we're finding. And um, obviously this really, you know, knocked boat builders and the leisure market for six at that time. Um, 
Dawncraft survived at that period, but they did have to, you know, to keep the price as low as possible, to keep selling the boats, they had to um, cut down uh, the standard of um, sort of interior ply that they were using. And I have to say, um, you know, some of the boats I saw in the mid 70s, and I read in this article, you know, it does state this material was wafer thin and so far removed from the wonderful ply that they'd used, you know, a few years prior to that. And it all looked very flimsy and very cheap. Um, but that said, you know, I can see why they did that. To, you know, they, they were aiming a lot of these boats at the starter market for people and um, but it was a shame um, you know that this hit all British businesses at that time really um, because it was it was a, it had a devastating knock-on effect um, but uh, as I say Dawn, Car Car Dawn Craft kept going and you know I, I have looked at many of their boats and um, I always thought um, I was moored next to a Dawn Craft 22 for many many years and I always used to look at it and you know particularly he was an older uh, gentleman that had that, kept it, and he used to keep it immaculate. And I must say, I always thought the laying up of the, you know, the glass fibre work on it looked very, very good. It looked nice and square and, and crisp lines. And, um, you know, um, and he was delighted with that. And he went many, many um, journeys uh, on that, all, all over the waterways. Um, so I couldn't, you know, it's unfair really to, to fault them on that. Um, but funny enough, in 1975, Motorboat and Yachting uh, did a report um, on several uh, smaller glass fibre boats like the Dawncraft Dandy and the Norman 20. And um, that's something that they did, you know, pick up on that the interior finish of the Dawncraft range they thought was quite poor. So I, I would have to agree with that. But, you know, if you're buying one of these boats later on, many, many years after, it's probably fair to presume that somebody has rejigged it, probably relined it, or, you know, you want to do that if you buy one of these, or if it hasn't been, but it, I, I would think it probably more than likely has been um, uh, over the years, because we're talking of sort of 45, 50 years, 55 years old now. Yeah, by the time we get to 1977, uh, sadly, you know, all this difficulties of the prices and um, and also by that time there was more steel narrowboats just starting, you know, to get on the canals. So you've got more competition coming from there. Um, there was probably a lot more hire firms offering good deals of holidays. So you might not have, you know, even want to think about buying your own boat when you could hire a lovely steel narrowboat and go off for two weeks or a week. So there were certain difficulties, as I say, by um, 1977. Sadly, uh, Dawncraft went into the hands of a liquidator, and um, but um, they managed to. Um, I think they sold some of the uh, bigger molds to a chap that worked at Dawncraft and he took those and started building the Highbridge uh, cruiser range himself in another location. Um, Dawncraft uh, moved and uh, went to Bridge North uh, in Shropshire and set up a factory there and eventually recommenced uh, building boats again obviously they got you know sorted out and the monetary problems sorted out and um, and as it says in this um, you know historical document um, in August 1978 an advertisement appeared from Dawncraft which announced that they are still the best value for your money and the Advert pictured a Dawncraft 22 and listed the Dandy 22, 25, 27 centre cockpit and a 30 six berth, all available from their main agents, which were, say, were Dean's Marine, Ladyline Group, Wilton Marina, and you could buy from Dawncraft as well. Um, so obviously they were back in business and, and making boats again then. Um, 
and there again I remember seeing some of these boats and um, you know I, I can't really fault them I, um, I don't know what they handled like or you know I have no experience of owning one um, as I've said because I never did but um, they always looked the part and you know were built very much for the canal with the canal in mind that if you're looking for a uh, you know a cheap starter boat today in glass fiber um you know i wouldn't you know necessarily run away from an old dawn craft um like all boats there's certain things you know that you want to look at um and all glass fiber older glass fiber boats has its problems and issues but um you know, certainly a worth a look, any Dawncraft boat, I think, because as I say, I still think they were, um, you know, quite a well-constructed and put-together boat. Uh, but that's very much my view on, on this situation. So moving the story on, by the time, uh, sadly, we get to 1985, I think, you know, they were in trouble again because they were only basically selling one boat a week which when you're in that kind of market is just not enough to meet the costs. And so very sadly, um, you know, um, in 1985, in September 1985, you know, uh, you know, Dawncraft went into receivership and um, obviously that was basically the end of the Wilson family involvement with Dawncraft boats. Um, there were some dawn crafts still built after then um, because uh, the moulds were sold to various, various people um, you know and I, I don't know a lot about these um, but I think Galleon Marine actually built some uh, of the smaller uh, dawn crafts and another chap took the moulds and built a few of them as well so it's interesting to note that um, from the period 1967 uh, when Dawncraft really you know went on its own and started this part fiberglass boat um, and um, right through to 1985 so this doesn't bring into effect the early years when they were uh, you know uh, fitting out the crescent boats uh, Dawncraft built um, a staggering 2,864 boats of various sizes. Amazing. And um, Dawncraft boats were used by some hire firms um, as well. You've probably seen that I put earlier on in this, I put a picture of um, a 1976 Blake's brochure with a range of Dawncraft boats that you could hire. So, um, you know, a very, very versatile boat and um, a good looking, you know, all round basic uh you know grp canal boat really um and it's interesting i'll i'll wanted to end this you know um to finish off with um obviously the wilson family finished you know um in 1986 but they couldn't sit still and um they had been making their own for many many years right right from when they started making their own boats they've been making their own upholstery etc and um, they decided that they could see a need uh, for a canopy manufacturer to make replacement canopies and perhaps some of you have heard of wilson canopies of kimber um, i bought i bought two canopies from them over the years and, and they were very very good canopies they used to come and measure up and uh, manufacture these canopies in the old um, heavy duty like PVC or the newer acrylic material and they were jolly good canopies and um, they went after the Dawncraft finished and that side of the business you know um, was closed um, within a you know a year they'd set up this canopy business and and Wilson canopies were certainly you know um, everybody around here um, on the river and this side of the canal as well you know that they would come out this far to measure up and so they, they were a great firm to deal with um, so that had quite a you know they carried on in the in the boating traditions or not not, not building boats but making replacement canopies um, so I hope you'd like you've enjoyed that little um, random look there at the Dawncraft range as I say and um, certainly worth looking at if you're you know um, I, I have 
whenever I do these videos, I like to have a look online, and there is still quite a few Dawncrafts out there for sale, in all shapes and sizes, and in all conditions as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I think they're a jolly good boat, and uh, I applaud, you know, the Wilson family, because they must have uh, brought boating, and particularly inland boating, to so many families uh, at that time, you know, right from the late 1950s right to 1986. It's quite an achievement, that is, I think. And, um, and with that, I thank you for watching, and thank you for your wonderful comments, as always. I really do appreciate it. Please do think about subscribing. YouTube keep telling me it does help, and I really do appreciate it, I have to say. And um, I try to answer every comment. I'm sorry if I do miss a few. Um, a few fall through the net, mainly down to YouTube not notifying me. Um, but thank you. Um, I really appreciate your, your great comments. And um, I'll be back with uh, some more videos very soon. So until that point in time, my best wishes, and... Um, Bye for now.